Hello! Something quite different today, although I seem to say that quite often, so really maybe it's kind of the same. I've got this. This is called the WIO Terminal, and if you're wondering what it is, let me tell you by way of a small intro. One thing I, I might do quite often is, you know when you're plugging the GPS, it's like, ah, oh, it doesn't seem to be working, what's going on, how can I check it out? And people ask me the same question, and I might say things like, oh, plug it into an Arduino, write a quick sketch and dump the info you get into the serial port so you can look at it on your screen and you can see if your board rate's right and if the data's coming down is correct and you can check it out that way. And often people at this point will go, what? Um, and it's, yeah, it's, I suppose it's a hard thing. You've got to plug this in the right holes here, you've got to plug this in your computer, you've got to go to the Arduino IDE, you've got to write something uh, and then you've got to know how to interpret the data that may or may not be coming up in your serial console. That could be tricky. And I thought, how can people use this sort of useful diagnostic tools without knowing what they're doing? And that's when I got contacted by these people. I thought, that's an interesting thing. Let me show you what this is. And by means of an unboxing as well. Inside, what you mainly get is this thing. There's a couple of other bits in there. We'll get to that in a second. You have got this. What this looks like is just a screen, but it's more than that. It's a completely programmable thing and it can use the Arduino IDE, it can use MicroPython and one other thing I can't remember. <laughs> and you've got stuff like you've got a user definable uh, button, you've got three other buttons here, um, and at the back here you've got uh, 40 GPIO pins which are compatible with Raspberry Pi. And that basically means you've got lots of inputs and outputs you can use, um, as well as USB Type-C, two other inputs there um, but instead of having to rely on you know how to connect things and stuff you can use the screen example of because it came with something if I plug this in USB to power it and turn it on it, it basically comes up with this little someone wrote this little game where you have to sort of run along and jump over stuff as an example and so you can interact um, by plugging stuff in and using buttons and do some diagnostics that way. And I thought that's really what uh, I'd like to do with this. And I thought I could use this, maybe try and write a few diagnostic tools for use with RC stuff. And then if, it, if people are interested in that one, they'd be able to download the code that I write for it. Um, so one of, the, one of the ones is testing out to see if the GPS works. I thought that'd be good. Obviously, from the point of view of a programmer, you'll need to be able to program it. You'd need to be able to write to this. It's got its own internal memory, but it's got an SD card in there as well. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what you can use this for. There's also a battery pack you can get which plugs in the back of this, and then you can use the USB port for communications as well, which might be quite useful. I'll just show you what else comes in the box before I start fiddling about with it. You get the world's smallest USB-C cable. I think I might stick with the slightly larger ones I've got. Got a replacement blue button, I guess in case that one falls off. Got a little user manual here and they have some links to their own MicroPython and Arduino tutorials. You've got some stickers, which is quite handy, that you can put over these to check you've got the pin numbers right. Because you don't want to screw that up, because um, some of these are powered, some of them are ground, and if you plug them in the wrong way, you can blow stuff up. So don't do that. Anyway, um, let's have a closer look at this and see what we can actually do with it and start fiddling about. So let's talk about exactly what's in here. And before I do that, I'm just going to plug it in because I put this benchmark demo on it, which uses this library called uh, LVGL or something, which is quite a complicated uh, bit of infrastructure, but at least we'll draw stuff on the screen and stuff. Uh, and you can see it's quite a usable screen. Uh, it's full color. Um, and yeah, it's, it's pretty nice looking. But anyway, what you've got around here, as I mentioned, this is uh, on and reset, that's the SD card. So the SD card would normally be for accessing extra things from your programs. This is a five position joystick, three user buttons there. And we've obviously got USB-C here plugged in. These ones here are called groove connectors. There are a whole bunch of these sort of groove enabled sensors that I see on seed site. I don't know if it's a sort of industry standard, but it's all sorts of different way of getting sensor information in there. This is sort of all part of the, the internet of things sort of stuff. So that is an option there. It doesn't quite work for what I'm doing because I think it's it's mostly 3.3 volts. And, and then it's, it's basically got some pins. I have gone ahead and put my stickers on there so I can see which pin is which. There's another really nice feature of the manual 
which actually helps you get which pin is which. And that's here. You can see it's actually got the sort of overlay. So you can say, oh, which pin is for what? And a ditto down here. You can see you literally overlay the shape of the, the unit with that. I think that's a really nice little feature. But there is so much inside this little thing as well. Aside from these buttons we've got and the input methods we've got, we're looking at um, a Wi-Fi adapter and Bluetooth, uh, and it's got a both a 2.4 and 5 gig antenna. It's got a free axis accelerometer, so it can tell what we're doing when we're doing this sort of thing. It's got a light sensor, an IR emitter, and it's got a, a microphone and a buzzer in there as well. And on the site, there's all sorts of uh, information about how to program this stuff and sort of, you know, starter in bits of code. It's got things like uh, doing infrared remotes and sensing lights and connecting to your Wi-Fi and stuff like that. So I feel a little bit like I'm not doing it that much justice by saying I'm just going to sort of try and read the GPS and see what we've got there. But, you know, that's kind of what I want to use it for. There is much you can use this thing for. What I want to do is have it as a little diagnostic tool. So, ignoring that for a second while it does its pretty pictures, I have got this little GPS from TWS, and what I'm going to do is, it's a little bit awkward because the, the pins here aren't quite right. I can't just shove these straight in the back. It'd be much nicer if these were like a, a regular server type pin. Then I could just use these to plug in one end and, and then this into the unit. But what I've got is basically this connected to a bunch of crocodile clips and then connected to that and what we've got in the back here we're going to have five volts ground and a receive pin on one of the uarts and what i'm just going to do is, is read stuff from the gps and see what i can do you can do full communications through usb-c as well so the other option is i can actually power that via this voltage pin so that instead of the voltage coming out it can go in that way and power it uh, and then I can use this to read. And whilst this is plugged in, I can still read it on the serial text. So I can plug into my PC, I can write out to my serial terminal and the screen just to see what's going on and stuff. So yeah, let's let, give it a go and plug in and see what we need to do to try and get this thing programmed. As mentioned, I'm just gonna use the regular Arduino stuff. There is other ways you can do things like this um, micro Python thing, which I've not experimented with, but you know, um, you've got some options there. Okay, well this could be slightly tidier, but what I've done, I've connected up 5 volt ground, ground is white, helpfully enough, and the RX pin on yellow there, and we've got our GPS over here. And if we power on now, what I've basically said is dump all the data out to the screen. So if we power up, we can, if it's going to focus, we can see some raw NMEA data. And what I've done, every time there's a slight delay whilst we go around and read the next packet, as I call them, I reprint it. Um, and this at least tells us that, you know, the GPS is printing some stuff down. What would be good is to actually be able to decode one of these things. And I'm gonna use this thing called the, the GGA line, which should contain all the information. So what I'm gonna try and do now is an extra bit to try and decode that into something more meaningful so you can at least see what's going on there. Okay, back again. If I plug in this time, I've taken that GGA data. You see this is still the same as last time, but if I press this button, what I'm doing now is giving us, well, I'm trying to translate that stuff into latitude, longitude, uh, GPS quality indicator, all the stuff I found that I can sort of pass that info out and I can always go back to the raw stuff if I want to. One thing I'm not enjoying about this is it when it reprints the screen it it redoes something. Uh, I'm gonna see first if there's something I can do to, to make that a little bit more stable because I don't I don't like that it's a bit hard to read. Okay attempt number three. I did a, a few versions of this focus including that um, LVGL library that I showed you ages but that was too complicated. So what I've actually done is use this thing called a, a, a sprite as like a double buffer and what I do every time I want to refresh the page is basically splat the whole thing to the double buffer and then update it and that that gives a smoother update so you can see the count going up 
but you can't really see much else going on. Um, and ditto for the the other screen where we've got some stuff going on. You can't really see much is going on at all apart from the fact that the packet count's going on, but you have to take my word for it that it is. Uh, what I want to do now though is take this outside and see if I can get some real info on it. Because this is the difference. What I couldn't do if I was testing a GPS on my computer is get real information. I've got a big desktop computer, I can't take it outside. This I can just take my little power pack, um, run it up outside uh, and see what happens. So I'm going to walk down to the park and uh, see if we can get some real data from here and that would tell us if this GPS is actually capable of getting sats and stuff. So this is the raw data. And if we press this button, this is our interpreted data. Of course we need to get some sats first. We're just here in the park. Should get some sats here. Okay, as we've got some sats up here, you get a lot more info going on here. Although it's slightly harder to interpret by hand. If we look here, You can see we've got 10 sats, we've got a Hadoop of under one, and we've got our GPS long and latitude. All good. It's about a minute. Well, that's about a minute 20 if packet counts one per second. Another useful thing you can also see is we've got the green LED flashing, it means it's locked. So if you ever had that and you weren't getting the info on your flight control or your OST, you could pretty much say for sure that you'd wired it incorrectly. Sorry about the visual and audio quality on that last bit. That's That comes from filming outside with my phone whilst uh, trying to film a reflective screen in the sunlight. But, you know, it is what it is. I think you get the idea. The GPS picked up satellites quickly. I was able to show what was going on on the screen, so I was happy that the GPS was working. But that's just kind of a, a test function to this one. I decided to use it to do a bit of diagnosis to see if my GPS was working. But there are a lot of functions for this. It's an interesting little device, clearly not something for everybody, um, mostly for people that are interested in kind of coding and seeing how things work when you, you know, plug in sensors and seeing what you can get. I think it's a really interesting Arduino device though. I mean, I think Arduinos have been like really interesting sort of little programming things for a long time and being able to plug sensors and do stuff. It's just the all in oneness of it. So it's got a screen, it's got the normal input output pins, it's got buttons, it gives it a sort of very sort of self enclosed project if you like so you don't have to sort of think about like hooking this up to this and that to that and how you're going to get uh visual data out of it somehow I, I think this is really nice as a sort of test bed for like lots, lots of arduino things you would have noticed that i wasn't showing you anything from the arduino ID about how i program this and stuff because you know i don't want people to fall asleep watching it um but if you wanted to see the code, I've created a, a little GitHub repository of my one piece of code to do the GPS on this. And, you know, I'd like to go back and do some more of this. It's very easy to do things like servo testing. That'd be a doodle on this. One thing I'm really interested in testing out is the USB host to see if I can get it to talk to Betaflight and have be able to, you know, use the, the menus to go around and, and change stuff. I think that would be quite cool. I just haven't really had time to look into it. But if you're into this sort of thing and you've got one of these or similar, feel free to uh, shove a pull request in, drop some code in the repository and everybody else can benefit from it. And uh, yeah, I mean, my code about GPS wasn't, wasn't finalised. So if you've got improvements to do, feel free or take a look at it and uh, use it as you would. Anyway, this lovely thing has been the YO Terminal, kindly supplied by Seed Studio. Many thanks to them. And you can find links down below for where you can check this out in more detail. Check out all those sensors you can fit to it and uh, my little GitHub repository down below in the comments. Hope that's been helpful and I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.